Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles in this episode. She's sitting out today's videos because she's not feeling very well, so you're stuck with me today. We're going to talk about Power World again. We're going to do a follow-up to yesterday's episode where we talked about Nintendo stands, Pokemon stands, losing it because they're angry about how successful Power World has become. Again, this is a game that looks very similar to, but is not quite, Pokemon. And a lot of the PALs in this game are similar to, but not quite, Pokemon. And there are accusations that the developer was using AI and, and all of that. And there really is no proof that they were. Uh, as far as I know, I know the, the studio head said something a couple years ago about generative AI, which a lot of Nintendo stands latched on to and they were like, oh, okay, well then they're obviously using AI to uh, create the uh, PALs in this game. But but people pointed out that the uh, the early versions of PAL World actually had a lot of these monsters in it. And it was before generative AI was like really a thing. I personally think it's just a bunch of really ass mad Pokemon stands uh, furious about how successful this game is. And it's a runaway success. It's I mean, millions and millions of copies. I don't even know what it's up to now. I think like 10 million copies over the course of a couple of days. It is one of the most successful game launches of all time. I mean, that that is, it's, it's insane. And again, this is a game that's available pretty much to everybody except PlayStation 5 owners and Switch owners, obviously, but gaming PCs, uh, it's on, it's on Xbox, of course. And uh, it's just, it's, it's just tearing it up. Now, will this game have legs? Will it last? I don't know. I'm going to be honest. It, it might be a flash in the pan, but hey, they made their money, right? Uh, these guys made their money, but now they're getting death threats. Of course, they're getting death threats because it wouldn't be the internet. It wouldn't be cartoon stand Twitter or uh, Pokemon stands if there weren't death threats involved. So we're going to we're going to talk about this and some of the backlash. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, go out to Spotify. Check out Gaming News Under 10, which is our gaming news podcast. It's you know, news under 10 minutes. That's, that's what it is. It's out on Spotify. We also post those episodes on the Clownfish Gaming Channel. And this normally would be, again, something that we would cover on the Gaming Channel but since it crosses over with batshit crazy cartoon stance and death threats and all of that Twitter drama, we're going to cover it on the main channel. Um, but hey, uh, Pokemon fans, if, if you want, if, <laughs> if you want actual Pokemon in your pal world, apparently, according to uh, Deserto, there's already been a mod developed to give you actual actual Pokemon characters. That is crazy. You can get actual Pokemon characters. You can get Ash. You can get Misty. Look at those actual official Pokemon. Yeah, and you can add them to Pal World. And uh, there you go, guys. You can, you can get the real deal. I think what's making uh, Pokemon fans so angry, though, is that Pal World, beyond the financial success, it actually is doing more than Pokemon's done in a while. In fact, the last Pokemon game I played was Shield, and I was disappointed. I thought it was very, very boring. And I feel like Pokemon hasn't evolved very much over the last couple of decades. I mean, it's effectively the exact same game I was playing on Game Boy Color back in the day. You know, just better graphics. And Pal World is definitely uh, stepping it up. Now, to be fair, Pal World is not a one-to-one -one Pokemon clone. It's actually more like Arc Survival Evolved with Pokemon-adjacent characters. But let's go out and look at uh, look at some of these articles and see what's going on. It's coming from Vice, which is somehow still in business. Pal World is tearing the internet apart. The new Pokemon with guns has sold five million copies and enraged Nintendo fans. This is uh, today. I think it's it's I think it's on track for ten actually. Who are baselessly accusing it of using AI? This is coming from Vice. Pal World is a new video game where players can capture knockoff Pokemon and put them to work in factory. In a factory manufacturing AR-15s, it sold 5 million copies in three days. Power World is made by a company called Pocket Pair, not Nintendo, not Game Freak. And it's not an officially licensed Pokemon game. But that may be hard to tell because Power World's monsters are all thinly veiled reproductions of the beloved Pocket Monsters. That is true. Again, 
the first time I saw the trailer, if you told me this was the new Pokemon game, I, I totally would have believed you. That hasn't mattered to players. The dream of putting a minigun in the hands of a creature that looks like Raichu, but isn't quite Raichu, has been popular despite the game being sold in early access, meaning it's unfinished. Players have flocked to it in droves, and the game has been well-reviewed. Yeah, it's got like a 9 out of 10, I think, on Steam. Unless, of course, it's part, uh, part of the internet that's full of Pokemon fans. Five million units in three days is unheard of. For a small developer like Pocket Pair, those are Call of Duty numbers. Last year's best-selling game, Hogwarts Legacy, sold 22 million copies over the course of an entire year. Yeah, over the course of the entire year. And they're on track to do, if they haven't hit it yet, like 10 million by the end of the week. Like, that's that's just absolutely batshit crazy. That is insane. The rapid breakout success of a game that on its face is just Pokemon with guns has some fans of the original angry. Of course they are. Uh, this guy says, I'm the exact opposite of a Nintendo stand, but seeing Power World make tens of millions of dollars off the most blatantly creatively bankrupt, poorly put together asset flip game is so depressing. Their entire company strategy seems to be theft. Diehard Pokemon fans are angry because they see Power World as a cheap asset flip and they believe without evidence. Wow, Vice is saying that without evidence. The Pocket Pair used AI to create it. The first accusation has some truth to it. Many of the monsters in Power World are obvious ripoffs of existing Pokemon. See Digimon. See Monster Rancher. Well, maybe not Monster Rancher, but see Digimon. Although asset flipping typically refers to the practice of buying pre-made 3D models. That's not true. This is basically uh, Totoro and Raichu or Electrobuzz or whatever. Or just an electric Totoro is what this is. Uh, this one says, I went through the entire... 111 list of pals and pal world to see what seems like a Pokemon ripoff compared to not because I've seen a lot of people talk about it, but no full comprehensive list. Here's what I found. Here we're going down the list here. I'll start with the obvious ones. Uh, Leafeon, Cinderace, uh, and the vice writer says to this, I say, so what? So what? Uh, the hard truth about Pokemon is that all of its games are asset flips of themselves. That is actually true. Like, how many variations of, like, a bird Pokemon can you do or an insect Pokemon? The franchise has stagnated for more than 20 years. Thank you, Vice. Uh, I can't believe I'm thanking Vice, but thank you, Vice, for, for saying that. Because Pokemon is, a, it's incredibly popular. Don't get me wrong. I have a soft spot for Pokemon. I know how popular it is. It's a massive, massive financial success. It is, the I believe, the most popular IP on the planet overall. I'm super excited about the possibility of Pokemon coming to Universal. People still fight over the cards. You know, they still do. But that being said, the games themselves, the Pokemon games, where it all started, the video games, they're stale. They really are. I mean, it's like I said, I bought Shield and I'm like, this is literally the same game I played 20 years ago. It's just got better graphics. And I heard really bad things about Scarlet. Um, I did. I heard it was not, not good. Uh, not good. Every year a new game drops and every year fans are disappointed. It's the same as the one before, but with slightly new mechanics. Yeah. In Pal World, Pocket Pair took the basic formula of Pokemon and set it in a Breath of the Wild style open world, which shocks me that Nintendo didn't think of it. And I think that's why these people are so angry. Nintendo didn't think of this. It's like you guys did Breath of the Wild. And it was a huge success. Right? So you just do that, but with Pokemon. Like, why, why reinvent Zelda as much as you did when Zelda actually is not stale? All the Zelda games, there are some core mechanics that are, you know, uh, an integral part of the Zelda experience, but they always change it up. Pokemon has not changed that much. And if they had applied that, that thought process to Pokemon the last couple of iterations, and they can do it because look at, you know, Breath of the Wild's on the Switch. You can totally do it. But you didn't. You're just like, yeah, it's another Pokemon game. Yeah, we'll give you some of the Pokemon. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> half-assed, you know, whatever. Because you're going to buy it because it's Pokemon. You know, shut up and, and drink your Ovaltine. Buy your Pokemon game every year. Shut up. Your pay pigs. That should be a Pokemon. Pay pig. Pay piggy. Um, and then it evolves into like Bank Run or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So in Pal, in, uh, Pal World, 
Uh, in practice, it's a function, uh, a functional open world survival game that tasks players with collecting resources. It is it's more like Ark. As some aggra- aggrieved, I'm sorry, it's a, I thought it said aggravated. Some aggrieved Pokemon players have pointed out Nintendo has no one to blame but themselves. Yes, for failing to iterate on its tired formula. Yes. That an upstart could sell an early access game for $30 and move 5 million copies is proof that people are hungry for something new from the tired franchise. Diehard Pokemon fans are still mad because the game shamelessly capitalizes on their favorite monster collecting IP, which to their credit is true. The hardcore fans' second accusation is harder to prove. The PAL world was created using AI. And that's what we did the video about yesterday. They're trying to say because the head of Pocket Pair, the head of the studio, uh, had good things to say about or was excited about generative AI, which is going to be incorporated into every creative tool going forward. I'm sorry, you don't like to hear it. It is. It's going to be. It's going to be just like, yeah, of course it uses AI because everything uses AI. That's going to be a huge part of the web and applications going forward. But because he said a couple things a couple of years ago about AI and he actually did do an experiment with Pokemon now they're like, oh yeah, he totally used AI. Uh, he totally used AI to generate these monsters. Uh, but Vice says there's no evidence that AI was used to make, to make a power world. To justify the claim, people point to various tweets from the CEO. In the tweets, uh, they talk at length about AI, right? Uh, Pocket Pair also published a game in 2022 that did use AI, but it was also the entire point of the game. In AI art and posture, groups of players compete in an art competition using an AI system. That's funny. I didn't even know they put that out. Pocket Pair obviously isn't above using AI to make video games, but the only time it's done uh, that's done so, it was clear about what the systems were used for. Pocket Pair didn't respond to Motherboard's request for comment on the issue. They've got 50,000 emails to get through. Um, they've got 50,000 emails to get through. But yeah, it's it's absolutely insane. This is what's going on. Uh, currently we are receiving slanderous comments against our artists and we're seeing tweets that appear to be death threats. Oh my God. First time, anytime you, you say anything that runs afoul of these cartoon stands, whether they're Pokemon stands or Sonic stands, or we had a run in with transformer stands. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. Geeky, uh, geeky reposted this. I knew about it, but we have IDW transformer stands because we thought it was ridiculous that there were Transformers stands out there, IDW fans, complaining about how G1 RC looked too sexy, she looked too female, and how laughable it was given how all the original female Autobots were very femme. But we also said, hey, you can do some different things with a female Transformer. And at the end of the day, it was kind of weird to be sexualizing Transformers anyway. Because they're robots that turn into cars. And I always thought it was very weird that IDW went down that road that they were, you know, sexualizing Transformers. We did a video about it. They clearly didn't watch the video. Uh, and there was a whole freaking thread about uh, wishing harm on us, hoping that we die for our opinions. And apparently, uh, Pocket Pair is starting to realize that this is how Twitter works. We have a lot of uh, mentally ill children that are uh, taking them to task here. And again, you, you look at who you're dealing with and it's basically some variation of Chris Chan. That's who you're actually dealing with. Do I think that any of them would harm a person for real over a freaking video game? I would like to think they wouldn't. I don't know if any of them would even know how to, how to do anything, (laughs) you know, that could cause, uh, uh, harm or, uh, have the inclination to even leave their house to go cause harm. I don't think any of these people are going to hop on a plane to Japan or whatever, but uh, yeah, they're clearly very, uh, very salty, salty, uh, mentally ill shut-ins with uh, too much time on being spent on uh, social media. This has come from IGN. Pal World Dev says they have received death threats amid Pokemon ripoff claims. Uh, last week, IGN reported on how Pal World, aka Pokemon with Guns is what they're calling it, had sparked a vociferous debate online. We talked about that. Uh, they said some Pokemon fans say Pal World's pals are too similar to Pokemon. We talked about that. And now Pocket Pair has insisted Pal World is more akin to a survival crafting game such as Ark. That is also very true in Valheim. Uh, Pocket Pair community manager Bucky, who has been active on Twitter, X, and Pal World's Discord, posted to say that they had received death threats since the game went live in early access from January 19th. I can completely believe it. We deal with this all the time. We have Every time we do a video 
about a cartoon or a game or, or something, some piece of media that has a very toxic fan base, we get quote unquote death threats all the time. I mean, this happens all the time. Anything related to Disney, anything related to certain cartoon network shows, uh, definitely anything related to Transformers now, which blows my mind because I hate to break it to you. Transformers and GI Joe are like the most bro IP ever. They are cars and trucks and jets and tanks that turn into killer robots, right? That's, they were like the most boy toys ever. And somehow these weird cartoon stands got a hold of that. Thank you, IDW, for enabling these people. But these same people gravitate toward, you know, Pokemon and Sonic the Hedgehog and all that stuff. And then it gets all, it just gets weird. It gets really weird. Um, so Bucky says they're frantically working through my DMs and emails, I promise. However, you'll excuse me if I skip over the death threats, threats to the company, and massively outlandish claims. I'd be like, you stole from Nintendo. Leave that corporation alone. If you're capable of writing like an actual human being, though, I'll reply as soon as possible. Yeah, so the CEO of Pocket Pair tweeted to say that they had received death threats and hit out as uh, hit out at the slanderous comments. Again, accusations, accusations that they are absolutely stealing from Nintendo, right? Uh, currently, we're receiving slanderous comments against our artists and we're seeing tweets that appear to be death threats. No, duh. Uh, I have received a variety of opinions regarding Power World but all productions related to Power World are supervised by multiple people, including myself, and I'm responsible for the production. I would appreciate it if you would refrain from slandering the artists involved in Power World. So they used actual artists and not AI, I guess, right? Um, yeah. So this is Asmongold. I'm going to wrap up with this, I think. Uh, he said, the success of Power World on Twitter, the success of Power World proves that the only thing customers actually care about is a good game. AI, slavery, Bestiality, copyright infringement, it's a video game. These are pretend problems that people don't actually care about, except for the except for the Nintendo stands, except for the Pokemon stands. Make good game equals people buy game simple. Yeah, and I hate to break it to you, it's a pretty good game from what I've played of it. For an early access game, especially, it's pretty good. And the reason that it's doing so well is this is the game that Nintendo and Game Freak should have given us. Maybe not with, you know, maybe, maybe not with the guns, not with the bestiality, but an open world survival type multiplayer Pokemon. This is what people have wanted. It's like the next step, the next evolution. You could even, if you released a Pokemon game like Pal World, you could even have it be a spin-off and not an actual like proper entry of, of Pokemon or whatever. But the, you know, just like this massive like Pokemon online uh, world community, and that's what people want. And Nintendo didn't do it, so somebody else gave it to us. And those five million copies in a weekend, that could have been Nintendo's money. That could have been Nintendo's money, except they would charge like 60, 70 bucks for it. You know what I'm saying? And it would have been the Switch exclusive, so they wouldn't have sold as many copies. But still, they would have sold it. It was sold like gangbusters. And they got beat at their own game by an indie, by an indie developer with a fraction of the resources that Nintendo has. So just let that sink in. These, these, these big companies. And look, I love Nintendo. I love Nintendo games. I do. So I'm not like, oh, I hate Nintendo. No, no, not at all. I love Nintendo. Um, that being said, they've gotten lazy. They've gotten lazy and they just expect your money and they don't think they have to try anymore. They think they could just crap out sequel after sequel after sequel and you're going to buy it. And uh, now people have an alternative. So we'll see how this goes. But uh, don't be mad at Pocket Pair. Be angry at Nintendo for not doing it first. I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later.